And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord hath said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people and they said, All that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. In the last few chapters in the Spirit Realm and Spiritual Warfare series, you learn about altars. Evil altars are built to idols all over the world. Majority of these altars are disguised in the beast system. The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans disguise their evil altars behind religion. Religion is the definition to sorcery, witchcraft, and idolatry. All three of these practices goes hand in hand. You can't be an idolater without witchcraft and sorcery. The workers of iniquity who run this world with the Satans, the scriptures refer to them as spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The workers of iniquity in high places have deceived the indigenous black people to believe that African spirituality is witchcraft and idolatry. While the workers of iniquity who control the beast system with the Satans practice witchcraft and idolatry publicly in religion. They made the indigenous black people believe every spiritual faith that is not a part of religion is sorcery and witchcraft. They demonize your spiritual faith, just like they demonize everything black people organize that exclude them. In other words, if your faith and beliefs do not correspond with the general belief system in the beast culture, they slander your faith and beliefs. A very good example is the awakening. Most people in the awakening are separating themselves from religion and the beast culture. A lot of people are starting to see the lies embedded in religion and in every aspect of the beast system. A lot of people are starting to believe the scripture that said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The wicked is controlling this earth with the Satans. The workers of iniquity wasted no time when they realized that a lot of black people started to wake up from the spells religion had cast on them. The workers of iniquity in high places that own every media outlet, as well as all social media platforms, started a movement about hate speech to demonize the awakening. They called our beliefs of being the true descendants of the biblical Israelites discrimination, racist, and hate. Some even call the awakening a cult. While religion is accepted and considered the standard way for all people to worship and serve their gods, Christianity is the most popular faith that kept the indigenous black people in bondage. They believe black people are the curse of Ham. He said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. The curse of Ham doctrine is a false doctrine that is used to manipulate black people and to uplift a group of people that don't belong. The doctrine of the curse of Ham is highly accepted in the beast system. Nobody tried to cancel Christianity with all of its false doctrines. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, still have over 3 billion people tied to their evil altars all over the world. The Israelites in the awakening simply believe and know that we are the descendants of the Israelites. The workers of iniquity deem our belief unacceptable and must be stopped because somebody's feelings was hurt. They can discriminate against us with no consequences for their hatred. 
but I have yet to see mainstream media condemn and harass the Ku Klux Klan like the Awakening. The KKK is a terrorist group that have yet been labeled as a hate group. Israelites, this is what happens when you forsake your God to serve idols. Those who hate you will rule over you. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Everything the indigenous black people do to separate themselves from the other species of mankind, the workers of iniquity slander and destroy to keep the indigenous black people from becoming free. If you pay attention to history, every time black people start to separate themselves from the other species of mankind, the other species of mankind will follow them and destroy what black people is trying to build for themselves. Black Wall Street is a very good example in history. Presently, censorship is the primary way the workers of iniquity is fighting against the awakening, as well as to keep the indigenous black people from increasing their knowledge about the most high, as well as who they truly are. The heathens have laws proclaiming freedom of speech as well as having the right to assemble and practice your beliefs. When black people begin to use their rights, it's a problem. The other species of mankind will find a way to discriminate discreetly against the indigenous black people to keep them from uniting. The Bible said a kingdom or household divided cannot stand. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. The spirit of division sent by the workers of iniquity using the powers of the Satan is ravishing the Israelite community. I can't wait for the day Israelites everywhere understand the power of unity. The kingdom of darkness is united. That is why the scripture said if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? The Satans and the rest of the fallen angels are united. The watchers that sin against the Most High by taking the daughters of men for wives and producing children with them committed a great sin. The watchers were aware of the consequences of their sin. They decided to take an oath to unite together to succeed in this plan. 200 watchers bind themselves with an oath to sin against the Most High. Regardless of the penalty to their sin, they came together on one accord to fulfill their heart's desire. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred, who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. Because of unity amongst the watchers, they succeeded in their plans. The Satans, the fallen angels, and unclean spirits will unite to carry out their will. The scripture said in the book of Matthew that an unclean spirit will bring other spirits more wicked than itself to occupy a person. An unclean spirit that is cast out will not become prideful and say, I will return and take my house on my own. The unclean spirit is willing to share his house with other spirits to accomplish its will. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The other species of mankind, as well as all of its subspecies, are united. They are willing to spend eternity in the lake of fire to rule over you. When it comes to the indigenous black people, unity doesn't exist. You will always find an indigenous black person willing to sell themselves short for the crumbs of the heathens. We see Israelites and indigenous black people participating in their own demise every day. Destroying their own is the only way the Satans permit black people to become successful in the beast system. 
anything that destroy the black community and black people, the workers of iniquity will promote. If the indigenous black people share the same belief and faith with the beast culture, they will praise and promote you. The workers of iniquity don't care if your faith and spiritual beliefs is right. They want you to share the same faith as them. They want you to participate in their rebellion against the most high. The workers of iniquity will not be honest with you about their beliefs. They will deceive you into believing that you and them serve the same God. However, their God and idols is not your God. That is why the scripture said the things they sacrifice on their altars are not made to the most high, but to devils. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The other species of mankind worship and serve devils. They do not serve the God of our fathers. The time has come for the indigenous black people to understand this truth. The Most High, the God of Israel, is not the same God that is welcome and worship in the beast system. If we all serve the same God, there wouldn't be multiple denominations in religion. Religion consists of various faiths. The God of Christianity is not the same God with Buddhism. The God of the Jews is not the same God with Muslims. Every nation served their own God. The Roman God, the workers of iniquity deceive the Israelites to believe is their God, is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Roman God in Christianity is a heathen God created to save the world. Our creator have no plans to save this world. That is why he is coming with great wrath, not only to destroy the nations and its people, but to create a new earth and a new heaven. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For well, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Regardless unto how the workers of iniquity package their God to resemble the most high, their God is not our God. The Satans are great deceivers. The truth is not in them. The Satans and all who follow them will never submit to truth. Therefore, they are incapable of teaching you truth. The scripture said that Satan is the father of lies. The scripture went on to say there is no truth in him. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You shouldn't be worshiping the same God that bless and support the KKK. When the hate group, the KKK, give their God a sacrifice, their rituals always include the burning of a cross. Their attire is similar to the mother harlot's uniform in the beast religion. The same individuals that participate in the KKK witchcraft rituals are the same people that are head leaders of your church, governments, corporations, and everything that control the beast system. Some Israelites share the same God as this hate group and many other questionable religious organizations all over the beast system. Why do the Israelites share the same faith with the workers of iniquity in the beast system? Why are your doctrines similar to their doctrines? The only difference in your doctrines and their doctrines is race. Israelites, the deception is deeper than you know. The time has come for you to look beyond what you can see. The scripture said, for we look not at what is seen, but the unseen. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The reason I say the only difference between Israelite doctrines and the church is race. The only thing some Israelites disagree with the workers of iniquity is the appearance of the Messiah and the father, as well as the group of people the world accepted as the chosen people. Israelites, you have to dig deeper to uncover the truth. Their doctrines is lawless and far from the statutes and commandments of the Most High. We have nothing in common with them. 
A lot of you know the curse of Ham doctrine is false. A lot of you agree that the spiritual Israel doctrine is false. You agree that the doctrine of the laws are done away with is false. You agree that the doctrine of the Messiah coming to save the world is false. What do you have in common with religion? Why do you still believe their version of the scriptures? What truth are they teaching you? There are many other doctrines we all can agree the church teach that are false. Yet Israelites in the awakening believe in the same God and Messiah as the church. What do you have in common with these people? Their God is not your God. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. I wanted to make it crystal clear that the gods of the heathens are not our God. If their gods is not our God, who is? Israelites, this is why you need to go beyond what you can see. You can't be a surface level reader of the scriptures. The sealed scriptures are deep. The word of the Most High goes beyond reading them. The words are alive and powerful. Therefore, the words of the Most High is deeper than what is written in the Bible. Only the Spirit of the Most High can reveal this to you. Don't be afraid to find truth that does not correspond with the false doctrines from the beast religion. The truth of the Most High's words is not supposed to correspond with the doctrines of devils from the beast religion. The truth of the Most High's words are to expose the lies and deceptions of the beast religion. The truth of the Most High's words is not meant to give confirmation to the false doctrines of the heathens. The heathens don't know the Most High. The Spirit of the Most High do not operate in the children of disobedience. The scripture said the Prince of the Air operates in the children of disobedience. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the Prince of the Power of the Air, the Spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The beast religion is lawless and don't comply to the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. If they did, they wouldn't create and circulate the image of the beast as the most high in the beast system. They are breaking the second commandment when they made the graven image. Because they are not of the most high but serve the lawless ones, the satans, they have a form of godliness but far from the truth. Again, I will ask you, what do light have in common with darkness? Why are you serving the same God as the children of disobedience? The scriptures already told us who is operating in the children of disobedience. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? I hope you're starting to realize that the gods of the heathens are not our God. Regardless of the resemblance between Jesus and the Most High, the Roman God is not our God. The workers of iniquity are falsifying their doctrines to make it appear as if the God they serve is the God of our fathers, and that is false. Israelites, the Most High said in the book of Amos, You only, out of all the families of this earth, he knows. The Father went on to say that he would punish you for all your iniquities. The God of Christianity said he took your sins away and he is coming to save the world. The God of our fathers have nothing in common with the God of Christianity. For multiple years, I've shown you how Satan used duality to deceive you in the tale series on this channel. I've exposed the two messiahs in the scriptures. We've discussed the two chosen groups of people, as well as the multiple gods in the scriptures, stealing the identity of the Most High. Israelites, the Most High is not double-minded, nor is he confused. The Father said he does not change. The God that is widely accepted in the beast system is not the same with the God of Israel. The time has come for you to recognize the Most High in the scriptures. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Israelites, do not let the alterations the heathens did to the scriptures deceive you. The God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is not worshipped, served, nor accepted in the beast system. Stop trying to give the heathens, little gods, the position of the Most High in your life. Don't let their doctrines of devils confuse you. The Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. 
Israelites, don't let the heathens false interpretation of the scriptures put you back to sleep after the father woke you up from your slumber. Don't let the heathens and their false gods order your steps. Only the most high should order your steps. The scripture said the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by the most high. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Israelites, don't even let your so-called pastors and Israelite leaders order your steps. That role should be reserved for the Most High only. If the Most High is ordering your steps, your path will not resemble the lawless ways of the heathens. Ask the Most High for a double portion of the spirit of discernment. A lot of Israelites lack discernment. That is why when the truth is spoken, so many get emotional and ready to stone the people sent by the Most High to help them. The Israelites have a history of forsaking the father, the prophets he sent to help them, as well as the Messiah. Today, we have many self-righteous Israelites believing that they are serving the Most High and they are far from the Most High. They serve the gods of the heathens, just as our ancestors have done throughout their generations. The Most High said in the book of Isaiah that his people don't know him. Until this day in the awakening, the Israelites still don't know the father. A lot of Israelites have a relationship with the Roman Messiah, they turn black. When it comes to the Most High, they have no relationship with him. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Israelites, now that you know the Most High is not the God of this world, every altar in the beast system are built to idols. Behind every altar is a God. Behind the altar in Christianity is the Roman God called Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, you're a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. The heathens made it very clear that Jesus is a white European male with blue eyes. This Jesus is God in the flesh. I find it interesting that Jesus, the European white male, is supposed to be the creator of all things, yet he is plagued with recessive genes. How can a perfect God that does not change share the same appearance with the children of the fallen angels, the offspring of the creatures he created that rebelled against him? Even if you turn Jesus black, he's still the same God, but with a different appearance. Nothing changed but his skin color. He is still the God of wood and stone our ancestors have not known. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Let me elaborate a little further. Our God is the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. Israelites, it is very important that you know the Most High is not the God of the world. The scripture said Satan is the God of this world. The Most High made sure to always identify himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I've yet to read in the scriptures where the Most High, the Father, called himself Jesus. Any deity claiming to be the God of our fathers and he does not identify with his people, the Israelites, is a counterfeit. Jesus is a savior to the world and he is Jewish. The Most High, the creator, is not Jewish, nor is the Messiah. The Most High is spirit. Anyone who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, and in truth. The Most High would never walk in the flesh because he does not operate in the flesh. If you go back to when the Most High decided to create visible things from the invisible, the scriptures in the book of Genesis said the spirit of the Most High was moving over the waters. The Most High didn't need to manifest himself in the flesh to create visible things from the invisible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, 
let there be light. And there was light. The Most High is spirit. His spirit, the Holy Spirit, is within you. The Most High said you cannot please him in the flesh. In addition, the Most High told us not to fight in the flesh because fighting in the flesh is Satan fighting against himself. The Most High, the Creator, can save his people from his throne. Every time we fight flesh, we lose. That is why the scripture said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If we don't fight flesh to overcome our enemies, the Most High don't need to come in the flesh to defeat our enemies. The Satans are already defeated. They died the same day they rebelled against the Most High. Their fate was sealed when the Most High rejected to save them and their children. That is why they wage war with you. No covenant was made to save the Satans, the fallen angels, and their children. The Most High made a covenant to save Adam and Eve and the righteous of their seed. Not all of Adam's descendants are righteous. Some serve the Satans. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden, and that shall be when the end of the world is come. Israelites, it is important that the Most High is behind every altar you worship and serve. If the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not behind the altars where you worship and serve, you are committing the great sin of idolatry. The Most High hate the sin of idolatry. The Most High said to his people, flee from idolatry. We are in the land of our captivity because of idolatry. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I hope you're beginning to see how idolatry and altars come together. At an altar is where you worship and establish covenants with your God. Also, at an altar, you present to your God a sacrifice. When our ancestors were seeking forgiveness of sin before the Messiah, they would build an altar to the Most High, sacrifice at the altar the required animal to atone for their sin. Our ancestors placed the animal on the altar. If the Most High accepted their offering, a covenant was made. Whatever they were seeking, it was granted to them. Today, Israelites and indigenous black people go to the altars built to idols in the beast system. They give the idol the sacrifice of prayer and money. They make their petition known to the God whose altar they stand. A lot of Israelites believed the God behind the altar they stood at the altar calls was the God of Israel. Unfortunately, the God behind every altar in Christianity is the Roman God, Jesus Christ. A lot of you were praying and crying out to the counterfeit Roman God, Jesus. Every time you stood before the heathen's altars and petitioned their God as an Israelite, you are guilty of idolatry. Now do you see why the wrath of the Most High is fierce towards his people? Now do you see the need to come out of her? Now do you see why the Most High plead with our people and their children for multiple generations to return to him? Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Israelites, now can you comprehend why the Most High is calling all true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth? You have to worship in spirit because you won't find the Most High in religion. If you found the Most High in the churches and assemblies you worshiped in religion, the Most High wouldn't call you out of that church or religion. The hour has come and now is when the true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth, because the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or Lo there, or behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Israelites, you're guilty of idolatry when you stand before an altar that is built to an idol. Every time an Israelite go before an altar that is built to Jesus or any other God, 
they are guilty of the sin of idolatry. The God behind the altar is not the most high, the God of Israel. Israelites, can you comprehend how our people are serving idols in the beast system unawares? They are made to believe they are serving the God of Israel in the church. However, behind the altar, a strange God sits. This is why you must know what you worship. Not only must you know what you worship, you must master every aspect of the religious faith you place over you to guide you spiritually. If our people truly knew their God, they would not give his glory to another. When the Most High gave his people the statutes, laws, and commandments, he said there should be no other gods before him. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The religion called Christianity is very clear on who their God is. Their God is a white man with long hair and blue eyes. This is how they depict their God to us. The same God they depict to us, he is also their Messiah. The word Messiah means deliverer. The heathens who created and served this God and Messiah rule this world. What do they need deliverance from? Are they in captivity? Do the leaders of this world need deliverance from the people they oppress? Do they need to be saved from the people they stole their land and resources that made them rich? What do they need deliverance from? This is a serious question. How are you the rulers of this world and you need deliverance? How are you the predator and the prey? Make it make sense. Israelites, the time has come for you to go deeper. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. The God of Israel said his people are made in his image and likeness. The first people of creation are black people. The heathens, science, acknowledge that Adam and Eve were black people. Every time they disturb the graves of our ancestors to prove that they are the originals, they get a reality check. The other species of mankind will continue to rewrite history to satisfy their unbelief. The altars where so many Israelites and indigenous black people praise the God of Israel in the beast culture, Jesus is the God behind the altars. No Israelite or any worshiper of the God of Israel should be at any altar built to Jesus or any other God. Jesus is the God created to give the world salvation. The God of Israel has no plans to give the world salvation, only the righteous. If your name is not written in the book of life, no salvation for you. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The Roman God is extremely lawless. The world acknowledged that the Jewish people of today are the chosen people. Christianity that claimed they served the Most High, the God of Israel, also acknowledged and accepted the people the world said are the chosen people. I see signs that say we stand with Israel in various places in the beast system. The leaders of Christianity gave us the image of their God. Their Messiah is also their God. Pagans are known to worship multiple gods. The Roman God is fine with the world worshiping and praising the Messiah. Demons and unclean spirits don't mind you serving multiple devils. They invite other devils to join them. Remember the man in the tomb with legions of devils occupying him? The Most High, the God of Israel, said he will not share his glory with anyone, especially with the graven image of the lawless one. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The Most High is a jealous God. He will not share his glory with anyone, not even the Messiah. The fact that the Roman God is fine with the Messiah stealing his glory is a red flag that he is not the God of our fathers. The Satans used the heathens to create this God to give them salvation because the true creator did not. The name of their God, his appearance, his chosen people, and his lawless ways does not match the characteristics of the God of Israel. The Roman God is a counterfeit. Why are we fighting them for their God? Israelites, you don't want their strange gods. Do not trade the most high for little gods that cannot save you. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. 
Israelites, it is important that you know what God is behind every altar you worship and praise. The workers of iniquity and religion serve idols. When you join them and make sacrifices on their altars to their gods, you're guilty of idolatry. Idolatry goes hand in hand with witchcraft and sorcery. We will discuss witchcraft and idolatry in another chapter. We are living in a generation full of idolaters. Most Israelites don't know they are idolaters. Most Israelites and indigenous black people associate idolatry with the worship of statues. Idolatry goes deeper than statues. Anything you put before the Most High is an idol. A lot of people worship the Messiah. I hope your knowledge have increased enough for you to see the evil altars of the heathens all over the beast system. Don't engage with their altars. Follow the example of our father Abraham when he destroyed the gods of his father's house. And Abram came to his father's house and saw 12 gods standing there in their temples. And the anger of Abram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Abram said, As the Lord liveth, these images shall not remain in my father's house. So shall the Lord who created me do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And when Abram saw all these things, his anger was kindled against his father. And he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand and came unto the chamber of the gods, and he broke all his father's gods. Israelites destroy their altars by sending the fire of the Most High on them. We are getting into deep things. The Satans and the workers of iniquity are not happy with this series. They know if you understand this wisdom, it's over for them. I have never seen censorship on this channel as extreme as it is right now when I started this series. Israelites, take advantage of the wisdom the Most High is making available to you. The awakening have shown me that a lot of our people don't know the Father. I hope the remnant will come across this channel and finally get to know the Most High and the true deliverer of our people. You should be elevating in your journey from glory to glory. Do not let anyone disturb your growth with the Most High. Israelites, allow the Most High to renew your mind. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil.